guys welcome back now that wwdc 2019 is over apple has given us a lot to learn lot of things to try out and learn and one of the top most thing is the swift ui and of course uh, to learn a new thing uh, it's always better to do a hands on and this week i i got some time to do some hands on on uh, swift ui of course there are enormous number of tutorials out there which talks about the basic features of swift ui creating a list navigation etc etc uh, but in my case my approach is a bit different uh, i would like to take some examples or apps that i have done previously or maybe a piece of app app that i have done previously and try to uh, convert it into this newest Uh, technologies so as part of that i choose uh, one of the component that i developed with ui kit uh, which is the accordion view where in which you can o- you can have multiple levels of list uh, like opening folders uh, so that that was my uh, plan so i choose this component and try to redesign uh, this component using swift ui and it was not easy uh i could manage to do it up to an extent uh but with some limitations uh but i would like to share uh, my thought process and what i have done and how i managed to get it and maybe some of you can look through my code and probably uh help me improve it uh yeah and as always i have done already coded this then i would be taking you through uh, the bits and pieces of the code and my thought process of course yeah let's start so before uh, starting i will just show you the uh, end product how it looks like so this is how the app currently uh, looks like so it has an array of categories and each category will contain array of products and each product can contain another set of uh, sub products so likewise you you go multiple levels so if you click on a category you can see that you could see the products open up and i have purposefully uh, not enable sub products for all the product so some products will stop at one level some products can go further again so if you click once more you can see the sub products so this was my idea so this can be uh, used for a expand collapsible uh, component for a table view also uh, yeah so so if you click it again it will close so like that you have this is what i have i was able to achieve uh, using uh, swift ui okay now let's go through the code um, as always like the apps are these days are data driven so we will start with the data model so i have a data model here uh, which which is like a generic object i don't know why i gave this name but yeah uh, i took it from my old uh, already done project so like what it has is like it has some fields like id name uh, parent name Uh, whether it can be expanded whether it is already expanded and the level of expansion and the type of content so here you have like whether it is a category or product or a sub product and the children let's say for example a category can have a list of products which would be its children so that's how i constructed the data model so that you can maximum reuse this data model uh for different uh, types since the data is the same yeah so that's that's with the model over here and to uh, support real time updation and all uh, i have made it uh, conform to the identifiable uh, protocol now next thing is like as i told like all the view in this project is backed up by a store which i call it as a data store so all the heavy tasks are being offloaded to this guy 
like preparing the data model everything is done by a data store and now let's look what the data store has so first of all the data store has the data rows which is an array of uh, this generic object and you can see that i made this data store as a bindable object uh, so that we get the real time data changes and once if the data row changes then we post a message to do the necessary action and this is the change object change variable then i have created this as a static uh, i mean singleton instance uh, the data store and when you initialize the data store in the beginning so we create a uh, test data uh, it will be like 15 category objects that is being created uh, as you can see none of the children are populated uh, right now and i am just randomly setting uh, the expanded can be expanded property to true or false so that we cover both the both the cases and like and i give a unique this id needs to be unique for the for the list to identify the object as uh, unique uh, so you gave the category name as uh, the unique id it can be uh, a different identifier in based on the use case then the name then since this is the topmost category it doesn't have any parent and it is not expanded by default then the level is zero and the type is zero i mean it's the category type then we are randomly setting whether this can be expanded or not and finally i am adding this to the data rows so this would be the initial uh, data value for our list to start with then uh, let's go to expand so this method is called when you tap on a uh, item which can be expanded so here i am uh, passing from the ui i am passing the object so like uh, where you have the cell and you capture the object similarly we can get the uh, object which is being actioned so we pass on that object here and we try to find the index so this is one thing which i i spend a lot of time because uh, in table view cell we could get the index path uh, tapped and index path or row very easily but i couldn't find anything similar to that in the list uh, so I have to do do it this way because our data row knows like what is in it. So you can easily find the index uh, of the current of a particular object. And then we check whether the object can be expanded. If it can be expanded, you make it as expanded as true because we are going to expand it. Uh, then like if I will come to this code later. So if uh, the parent object is of type zero, that if it is a category object, then I'm creating just products because sub products are uh, uh, children of products. So I'll just add only the product. And again, it's the same thing. Like I randomly uh, set some of the products as expandable, some as not. And I add those as the children to the parent object so now the category is prepared with the products and then i am inserting the newly created product objects into the data row which is our tracked object and we know since we know the index of the parent object we have to insert it below that so we'll just add one to the index and then uh, we insert the uh, data into the data rows so that uh, the list now can repopulate uh, with the newest data and you will see that all the new data will be uh, below the uh, the list item that you have tapped and if the uh, object type is not category then we only have products because we only have two drill downs so the products is then populated with the sub product and again the same thing you know the uh, index uh, at 
whenever you are tapping on a product the uh, parent object is going to be the product so you know the index of uh, that product object and similarly you create the sub products and insert it into the uh, data rows so it get, it triggers the change uh, with the bindable property and your list gets repopulated and now we come back to uh, do, 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 yeah this piece of code like for why this this piece of code is there because we when you execute this block this whole block you have already added all your children to your objects and if we do not do not put this code it will execute this uh, piece of code again and it will try to insert the objects again it it's like duplicates so we are just checking like whether the parent object already has a children then no need to add it again just add it to the data rows again so uh, this this happens when you first expanded an item then collapsed it then you are trying to expand it again so then this code will be executed this particular code is going to be executed and that's uh, with the expand method so this method gets called when a user uh, taps on a collapsed row which can be expanded okay now coming to the collapse so here uh, what you have to see is like if you tap if you have opened category and inside the category if you have opened a product and you tap on the category then you have to close the entire entire uh, children so we have to ma manually find out uh, how many how much index you need to remove from your data rows that is what is happening here like first you get the index where in which you have tapped for example if you have tapped on a category you get the uh, index of that category then you have this convenience method where in which you recursively loop through uh, the children and find out uh, the total indexes which are open and then you get the total indexes uh, needs to be collapsed and we create a collapse range from that starting from this index uh, and the end value and then from the data rows we remove the the sub range and this triggers a change in the bindable property and the, your list reloads so that's how the collapse is being done so that's what these two uh, function does so as you can see the major operations uh, with the data everything is done offloaded by this data store only thing uh, the ui or the list has to do is to just listen and then re reload the list based on the data provided so that's that's with the uh, data store i think i have covered yeah uh, test data no, 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 no. yeah now let's go and uh, see the ui so let's first look at the data row or the table cell if you can say the cell that we have so here you have one property is an instance of uh, or it's it's a variable for the generic object which we'll be passing from the list then in the body uh, we have a text uh, like if there is a name we will be displaying that name else we are giving a default value then i am adding a spacer and if a particular uh, data or the object was expanded we show it as a with a down arrow if not it will be like uh, right arrow and if it can be expanded yes and i am uh, setting a padding and the padding is calculated based on the level so level into 15 i mean i just gave a random value so that we could see the shift that's what i did and in the preview builder i am just giving like couple of values just so that we can preview it so the uh, the data row is pretty simple the table cell is really simple now let's go and look at the data list so here uh, we create a binding property for the data store and we create a navigation view inside the navigation view we create the list view 
and we populate the loop through the list view and create the data row and this is where the main change lies so in usually uh, all the tutorials you can see like mostly the uh, list would be embedded within the or list or the data row would be embedded within the navigation button so that when you tap it navigates so what if if you don't want to navigate if your behavior is to just do something else like expand or collapse or something like that or how should you do it so what i found was like i had to implement this tap action in this tap action i am just checking whether the data is already expanded then we call the data store to collapse it now in the data store you are modifying the data rows so which triggers the binding property here and which in turn uh, triggers the list to reload so you don't really need to do anything over here and same like if it is not expanded we will ask uh, it to expand so now here uh, the, the main problem was like i i don't find any way to uh, get any offset or index path or anything like that to capture the index tabbed the only way was like to pass this object back to your data source and from the data source we figure it out where the possible uh, index was and since our data source and ux are like tightly uh, coupled uh, this should be always correct i believe uh, yeah and yeah and that's all it is and you have i'm just adding a title um, for the navigation uh, bar so now coming back to the limitation coming to the limitations so for example now at some point uh, one one thing is like i have a uh, in the data row i have a text here i have a button here and i have added a spacer and due to some reason if i tap anywhere between these two nothing happens if i tap on this button it opens and if i tap on this label it opens but nothing is happening on the middle portion maybe it's because of the spacer i i am not sure uh, what's going along there and the other thing was like once your uh, category or product or anything is not expanded that means you have to see some details so for example i need to tap this and go and see some details but i couldn't figure out how to do it because i tried to add a navigation button based on some condition but some or the other it was throwing errors i tried to do a presentation uh, that also didn't work then i tried to add a uh, presentation button i guess uh, presentation button uh, nothing nothing worked out so this is the one of the i mean challenge that i have i couldn't so far i couldn't figure it out uh, if some of you know it uh, let me know but so far this is what i have done like uh, it took like for me it took like around one day to do this whole piece and almost half of the time was doing researches how to make this work yeah and and this is the end result and yeah i'll post the uh, link to the source code uh, in the description uh, please go and check it out if you have any clue or maybe uh, i'm not aware of some of the properties or the behavior maybe if you find it you can just comment it uh, on the either in the github or in the video uh, so that i can also go and fix it and i do have a product detail view just which displays the product name but unfortunately there is i don't have any mechanism to call this yeah so what we have let's do a quick recap we have discussed on the model and model is identifiable uh, then we have the data store data store has a bindable uh, object and uh, a property which is observed and change to this property triggers a change message 
then it creates the test data it expands the cell collapse the cell mm, yeah, what else yeah that's all with the data store then you have the data row which handles the uh, data which is being passed and it handles the level just to show that it is shifted or it's a drill down or it's a child of something then you have the data list when which you populate the uh, list then you have the product detail and unfortunately it's just a just a unused view yeah i think uh, that's all i had to say thanks for watching bye bye